Yo, what's good? Someone that's no one, and welcome back to another collection of trip reports. We're covering different hydramine reports again today, more commonly known as Benadryl. If you don't know in high doses, this can act as a dangerous hallucinogen, providing realistic delusions that are oftentimes dark and scary, with things like spiders, bugs, voices, shadow people, and much more popping up. And joining with me today for another collab is the good homie Tails from the trip. Tails has a focus on how bad experiences can get. So who else better to come with me today and read some stories? But make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channels if you haven't already. But yeah, we got some bangers here guys. I'm sure you'll enjoy this. So without further ado, let's dive right into this. Two grams of DPH. I went to hell and back to be able to tell you this. Two grams. Don't. Do. It. Unless you want to end up in the hospital while being threatened by your inner demons and feeling almost unbearable pain in your chest, thinking you could die any second. Still dealing with minor weakness, but it probably won't go away for a while. July 12th. After around 20 minutes of consuming the pills, I started to see mild distortions and audio hallucinations, mostly ticking and scratching, which seemed distant. I was inside the car which was going to the house I was supposed to spend my trip at, and I kept telling Martin, my friend, not to interfere with the trip in any way, unless it's obvious I'm in danger. I noticed my memory span was becoming short, and the tickling and scratching was getting louder, along with a mild head rush-like high pitched sound. Right before we reached this place, I realized I couldn't move and my vision started glitching up. It kept flashing and freezing, and sometimes I wouldn't see anything at all for a split second. I told this to Martin and he convinced me I could walk, I just had to do it carefully. So I followed him to the house. I was very, very heavy, and every time I looked at the floor, it was like my feet were sinking into it. I was left alone in the room, which was slowly melting, and most of the furniture had bright, unusual outlines. At this point, I felt crawling all over me. Vision flashed again, and I found myself completely covered in spider webs. Moving my hands through them helped for a little while. Hands would go through them, and they'd fade, but the webs came back almost immediately. I could feel the sticky sensation on my skin, which made them seem just as real as I was. Then, there was a loud knock at the window. I turned around to see someone standing behind it, so I opened it. I heard music coming from outside. It was different from what I heard during my last trip, but strangely familiar and similar to it. Let's go, Cedric, said the creature, and I climbed out the window without much consideration. It was extremely hard to walk. The grass and the trees seemed grainy, and it looked like they were moving, crawling, breathing, and living. My sense of time was severely distorted. Some steps would feel like an eternity, or I would black out and confuse very long periods of time for a second. We were going towards the music, the creature walking a few steps ahead of me. After a while, I started noticing lights, probably torches, among trees, and hundreds of moths around them. The air was full of moths, and they would land on me and fly around. I tried my best to keep them out of my face, failing miserably. Finally, we reached a clearing. There were many people there. At the front, very still, stood my relatives, all dressed in black, surrounded by shadows and people I don't know. They all seemed frozen and had the same blank expression on their faces, with their eyes fixed on me. I tried to talk, but my voice got stuck in my throat. It was extremely sore and dry. I started feeling a mixture of guilt and fear, because I could tell they all knew the creature took me here because of DPH, and considering most of them were dead, I wasn't sure if I was still alive. Suddenly, there was a very unpleasant crackling sound and a white flash. The creature who took me here was gone now, and everyone was just walking around and talking, completely ignoring me. I decided to sit because of the heaviness. After a while, I noticed with the corner of my eye, 
a black dot moving through the grass towards me very quickly. Then, I would feel a bunch moving under my shirt at the right shoulder. I freaked out and smacked it, and a black rat fell out of my sleeve. It looked dead, but every time I took my attention off it, it would disappear and run slash hide under my shirt again. I was really scared of it for some reason, and after around 5 loops of this, I started beating it repeatedly after it dropped out of my sleeve, until the rat's body turned to some sort of rubber goo. Its legs were still moving. After this, it wouldn't touch me again, but I kept seeing its distorted body with the trembling legs from time to time. I quickly stood up and went to a different spot. I was approached by my mother. She was crying. Why did you do this, Cedric? We warned you. I told her not to worry and that I was going to be fine. Bullshit. Other people froze again and I can hear voices saying, We warned you. And, What have you done? Even though their lips weren't moving. The longer I looked at them, the more distorted they would get until they had bug eyes and arms reaching the ground. Another flash followed. I was back at the front yard of the house and saw Martin standing by me. I assumed he shook me. He asked if I was alright and said that I'd been standing there for ages. He had spiders in his hair. I tried to say yes, but I couldn't because my mouth was painfully dry. I walked my way to the house. Martin told me I never went there in the first place. The whole trip thus far has been experienced right after getting out of the car, with just standing slash moving around at that spot. There are many blackouts at this point. I recall centipedes from my last trip, and spiders all over me and inside me. Around 10 of them crawled out of my mouth. July 13th. I woke up, still tripping hard. Never remembered falling asleep. I went to check the next room. Martin told me I was out for around 5 hours. Later I found out he was still asleep and the information was false. I managed to get some water and go to the bathroom because the urge to pee was terrible. Moving was still a difficult task and I couldn't concentrate properly. This is when I posted alive with two A's. When I got back to the living room I saw someone sitting on the couch. It stood up and I recognized the figure to be Hatman. He walked towards me and said, You are getting in and running out. I started feeling extremely hazy and got another head rush. I'm not sure if I left the sofa or blacked out and lay down on it, but I was there at the edge of sleep and the hat man was looking right at me. This might be a dream or a fool blown trip. I don't remember closing my eyes and I could still feel my surroundings. I was in an extremely vast room. The floor, ceiling, and walls were black. There were no doors and I couldn't see where it ended because darkness hid it out of sight. There was a woman standing right in front of me. She looked at me, smiled, and took her face off as if it was a mask. The face behind it looked exactly the same, but she was bleeding from her eyes, mouth, and nose, and her eyes were completely black. I looked around the room to see faces appearing on the walls and ceiling, greeting me without words until they started to fall down like masks too revealing bruised and blood-covered faces. The mass would turn into ash that wouldn't settle, but move around on the floor and by my feet. That's all I can remember from this stage of the trip. After snapping out of this, I lay there for a while, feeling my heart beat rapidly. The hat man was gone. My hallucinations were mostly audio now. I heard lots of incomprehensible whispers and quiet singing. I posted on this thread again and decided to go to sleep for real. I was so very tired. This time, I drifted into deep, deep sleep. After a while, I realized I was sleeping. My vision was completely black until a room began to appear. It was small and gray, its door open, displaying nothingness. I walked towards the door and stepped out of the room. Several shadows approached me. The door shut and I heard, you are out, very clearly. Then I felt a burning pain at my chest. Martin said I started screaming. He tried to wake me up and check my pulse, then realized what was happening and called an ambulance. I had to down a lot of charcoal. Minor hallucinations for around three days. Fuck. 
10 p.m. I had taken the pills. I was playing GTA 5 online in my parents' house upstairs game room. I was 18 at the time and very immature. Did Benadryl a lot, but never like this. 10.30. Talking to the people online and they say I sound like I just did heroin. I did not say I took Benadryl because at this point I could not talk and I was just too involved in getting to the end of the mission in GTA. 11. I got up to use my bathroom in my room. I look over and see my friend sitting on the toilet. He's loading a bowl of weed into a bong. I tell him he can't do that, it's late and he needs to leave. Two seconds later, he disappears. No idea where he went. I text him, where is he? No reply. Later I look at the text and it's gibberish. I look in my mirror and see everyone I work with sitting on my bed behind me. They say something I can't make out and disappear. 12 AM. Black SUVs are pulling into my driveway. I wake my poor father up to tell him what's going on and ask if he sees the cars as well. He says no and asks why am I up this late and if I'm on drugs. I think I managed to tell him what I took, but pretty sure this is also a hallucination because he never did anything about it. At this point, I'm no longer even knowing I took anything and think what I am seeing is real. 12.30. Try to fall asleep. I see a cup on my nightstand and try to take a swig of some water. When I do, it tastes like poison. My cousin popped up from under my bed and told me they're trying to kill me with poison water. So I knocked the cup over and got out of bed. Next thing I see is a black man walk to my bedroom door. He tells me I owe him money for some coke. I have never done coke before, but in this hallucination, I guess I have. He points a gun in my face and I slam the door. 1245. I look out the window and see people with machine guns standing on my lawn. I thought they were going to shoot me, so I hop into a bathing suit, nothing else, and run to my parents' guest room. I see my mother sleeping and I give her a hug. At this time, my mom was out of state and this was a total hallucination. I was hugging a pillow now that I remember. I run out of my house. I see people chasing me with guns and cops on the sidewalk. I run to the cops trying to surrender and every time I get close enough to them, they spawn farther away. I was trying to get help at this point. I think I was desperate to find anything that could help me. I was delirious, and I could not tell reality from fake. 1.30 I was now next to my old elementary school on the sidewalk in just my bathing suit. I saw more people with machine guns hiding in the bushes. I was sure they wanted to kill me. I look over and see a golf course which I ran to. I was considering jumping into the pond to swim away after hearing a gunshot which in my mind sounded like a rifle for hunting. Thank God I did not jump in because I know now I would not have made it. Next thing I see is my old classmate pull up on a bike next to me telling me to follow her. So I did and I ended up back on the bike path and she disappeared. 6 AM. I blacked out until this point when the sun started to come up. I remember running on the bike path and being so confused as to where I was. I finally ran into a biker and he was like 50 years old. I could still not tell if he was real, but I told him to call the cops and have me arrested because I was so delirious I didn't know what to do. I laid down on the ground and told him I would not hurt him. I guess about 5 minutes later the ambulance shows up and takes me aboard. I remember them asking me continuously to repeat my name about 10 times. At this point, I was annoyed, but now I get they were trying to have me work my brain to see if I was actually in a psychosis or not. 8 AM. Arrive at emergency room. Catheter up my penis. My dad arrives. He tells me I left our front door wide open and the cops came and talked to him about where I was. I was so embarrassed but still hallucinating that I saw my sister standing next to me along with little kids swinging on the ceiling and Pablo Escobar standing next to my hospital bed. Next thing I knew, I was talking to a health specialist via Skype and she said I needed to go to rehab. 1 p.m. the next day. Headed to rehab for 30 days. No one believed me that I was there because of Benadryl and I just got through it. 
Smoked a lot of cigs and met some cool people, but I'm not an addict, so I just did my time knowing it was a repercussion of my stupid actions wanting to try the trip I had heard about on the internet. Never did it again after that. Never will. 700 milligrams. Disclaimer. I do not recommend taking this much of any over-the-counter. I did it stupidly attempting to sleep one night, sick as hell with the flu. This was not an intentional trip or planned out by any means, and I had no idea what was about to happen. Generally, I love psychedelics, but remember kids, this is a delirium, which means you're basically having the worst nightmare of your life while awake. If you're going to do it, have a sitter present and be prepared for what's to come. Happy hallucinating. I couldn't sleep to save the life of me. I was in withdrawal from opiates, generally pain pills, which is an entire other story altogether, and sick with the flu slash chest cold. I decided that taking a few sleeping pills would help me get a few hours of sleep. After about an hour, it wasn't working, so I took more and more and ended up taking the entire packet of 12. I could have sworn I took two more, but I don't know. About a half hour later, I went to stand up to use the bathroom, and everything had a strange feel to it. The room was suddenly darker, and felt like something bad was about to happen. People didn't look right, things were alien in shape, ordinary things looked wrong and menacingly shaped. There was a constant black, jellyous ball that would be nearby. My legs and arms felt 1000 pounds, and I had the worst metallic taste in my mouth. I remember saying, guys, this isn't right and my friend thinking nothing of it. I walked into the bathroom where I proceeded to attempt to throw them all up because I realized something wasn't right. Yeah, that wasn't working so well. The pills came up but only what was left of them. They were basically already jellified into my body and there was nothing I can do but ride it out. I realized this somehow in all my horrific shit but knowing I was hallucinating it was simply a reaction still wasn't calming me down any because I thought I was going to die after that. I'll tell you what I remember. I sit down on the floor attempting to relax but I look up and the digital clock is just counting up minute by minute and it gets faster and faster until it starts going backward and ended up on 666. I swear to god I thought of that movie 1408 because it had just come out not long before that. This must have been where I fucked up. I remember saying, no, 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 and was terrified of what was to come. I took that as where my trip really went downhill. It was almost like my brain was warning me with the clock. There was a woman I could see out of the corner of my eye. She was haggard, bloody, and wearing all white. For whatever reason, she kept asking me something and I couldn't make it out. I would get up to walk over to her, and when I'd get closer, she'd just evaporate away and reappear somewhere else. I was seeing children sitting in closets, swinging around, holding hands, and then they would look at me and laugh. I kept thinking my friends were over there when they weren't. I'd see Dan over in the corner, doing routine shit like playing his guitar, or singing a song, or just sitting there, in the dark. I'd be like, what are you doing, Dan? And every time I'd walk over to him, I would touch the back of his head and he would disappear. I moved on to a completely different existence after that. I can't even remember most of it because I literally went to another place. I thought I had died and this was hell. Just a constant feeling of a thousand people really close to my face with shadows behind me. I called my mom but what I said to her was nothing what I imagined or remembered. The convo went something like this. Me. Mom, I took too many sleeping pills and I'm seeing shit. Mom. Oh, that's your own fault. Drink some water. Take a deep breath. Try to get some sleep. There's no point in going to the ER because they'll just pump your stomach and you don't want that. I seriously believed this is what she said up until a few weeks ago when we started talking about it and she tells me, Anna, that's not what you said. And I was like, you're kidding me. What did I actually say? She said I told her that my ex was perpendicularly horizontal to the wall and the bed and he's levitating and apparently went off about levitating people and how there isn't anything to him, it's like he's clear and I can see through him, and apparently everyone is dissolving into shit, which 
That one I can kind of understand, because it was almost like everyone and everything was 2D and there was no mass to them or anything. Like if someone were to sit down on the couch, they would have become a part of the couch, almost like a picture printed on a t-shirt, if you can picture that, ha ha. That conversation went down nothing like what I remember. After that, I managed to make it down to the bedroom where I laid down only to hear the sound of music playing far away. It was like a radio was on and I couldn't find where it was coming from. That's when the spider started. Quite frankly, I'm surprised it took this long because from what I've read from other reactions to this shit, they happen almost immediately. Well, these little bastards were forming out of the fuzz on the bed. Anything, cat hair, fuzz, strings, etc. They would turn into this medium sized black and brown spider with these queer, almost finishing line legs. I'd go to touch one because I had a terrible case of the touch everything and it disappears so every time I did it would reappear somewhere else and bring 10 more with them. They never really bothered me much except they would crawl on me but after an hour of insisting to my ex that there were spiders in the bed and I'm not imagining it, I started to just get tired of fighting them off and tried to ignore them. The kaleidoscope of shit that was going on when I closed my eyes was insane. That was probably the only nice part about this entire hallucination. The only time I didn't like having my eyes closed was when a face would bum rush me out of the visuals and scare my eyes open. While lying there trying to fall asleep, I saw Barbie dolls sitting on the tops of each door frame and they were lined up and they would all turn and look at me and kick their feet which for some reason was hilarious to me and didn't frighten me at all. In fact, it was probably the nicest thing they could have done. After that, I just kept seeing shadow people and people outside my window looking in, people in the closet and more friends that weren't really there. At this point, I was able to finally fall asleep and when I woke up the next morning, I must have only gone 4 hours but the hallucinations weren't nearly as bad anymore. The spiders were still there for a few minutes but they would just crawl back into the blankets and they were eventually gone for good. The last hallucination was my friend, Chris, peeking his one eye through the crack of the bedroom door. And when he saw me, he smiled and asked if I wanted to visit again soon, and I got up to open the door to push him out, and he disappeared. After that, things were back to normal. I managed not to suffer any serious repercussions from that one, and I'm glad to say I haven't had any withdrawals since that time, because I'm now six years clean from the dangerous crap. Smiley face. As always, please be safe about your journeys to the other world. Sometimes they can be scary. I don't know how it would feel to go into a DPH trip knowing the outcome. I'm sure you can make it nicer and a little easier to handle with the proper setting and mind. Peace and love, and remember, knowledge is power when it comes to anything. That includes drugs. Heart. This was my first time taking DPH, and me and my sitter Jay had measured out 700 milligrams for me in Benadryl. I took half of them down with water, then proceeded with the other half right after. I plopped myself down on the couch and awaited for stuff to start happening. First, whenever I got up to get something, I felt like I weighed double what I normally did, and decided it was too much effort to move around, so I went back to the couch. After a little bit longer of feeling heavy as hell and downing glasses of water due to dry mouth, I started seeing a weird glow to everything, like the room was fake. This is when I started having conversations with people that didn't exist. My sitter Jay would be in one chair while I was talking. Next thing I know, he's on the other side of the room, and my mom and dad are downstairs, and I'm thinking, oh shit, but they actually weren't there amongst the 30 or so other people I saw and talked to. The next thing I saw terrified me to the core. I saw a cloud of spiders come by my head from behind me, and I said to my sitter Jay, Oh shit, I see the spiders. They hit the wall in front of me and spread out. They were everywhere that shadows were. It's dark everywhere. They were crawling on my skin and rolling around in balls of spiders. I would grab them off my skin and look at my hand to see a bunch of spider legs dissolve. I would see a book on the ground and try to grab it, but my hand would pass through it about 10 times before I understood it wasn't real. 
Later in the night, I went to the bathroom after fending off spiders for about two hours and talking to random people. I ended up missing the toilet completely. My sitter got quite pissed and gave me paper towels to clean it up. I was distracted by the spiders around the toilet and the sharpie that didn't actually exist, so it took some time to get me to clean it up. I headed back to the couch where I freaked out due to the non-stop flow of spiders and just couldn't handle seeing them anymore. I left my sitter's house at about 5am and knocked on my door. My mom answered it and asked what I was doing home so early. I said words to her that I don't remember and she said, what? I did it again and she followed with the same response. I finally got smart and said, I don't know, I'm just really tired. I went upstairs and into my bedroom where I saw five people sitting around and said, you guys need to leave, I'm going to sleep. I turned my head away and back. My last words were, what in the fuck, right before I passed out and awoke at 5 p.m. Nonsensical Conversations I apologize in advance if there's a lack in detail. I don't remember much from this trip besides the general concepts, and I wasn't able to keep track of time because I was too delirious. I'll start by saying this. I hate how diphenhydramine feels. I am fascinated and intrigued by delirium, but the body load and dry mouth are quite dysphoric, which is why I used to stay away from this stuff. After dosing, I sat and watched TV, waiting for the effects to kick in. I knew the trip was starting when I got the familiar dry mouth, accompanied by a weightless feeling that would soon turn into feeling like gravity multiplied by several times. The DPH static started setting in, and I would notice small ripples in my vision as well as objects flickering or pulsating. I was used to this by now, as I had taken DPH several times, ranging from 250 mg to 900 mg, but for some reason, 1200 milligrams must have been the perfect dose. I eventually became too delirious to notice or care about the dry mouth or heavy feeling. It was at this point that I decided to go to my room. This is where things get blurry. I decided to turn the lights off in an attempt to enhance the hallucinations and just sat there. Sure enough, when I focused on my office chair, it started rocking back and forth violently. For some reason, this scared me and I decided to look away. When I stared off into my closet, I noticed my friend Jackson hitting what I thought was a dab pen. He looked at me, smiled, and motioned for me to come closer to him. I was hesitant at first, knowing my mind was playing tricks on me, but figured, if it's real, I'll get more high. If it's not, nothing bad will happen. So I got up and started walking towards my closet, only to realize Jackson was actually just a dress shirt hanging on the wall. I remember talking to myself throughout the night, hearing voices, and responding to them, having conversations. I couldn't for the life of me remember what they were about, but just knew it was happening. I do remember at one point responding to one of the voices, saying, La Mu, as in LMAO. I guess I must have thought it was something funny, but couldn't laugh due to the tightness in my throat. There were several times where I would turn to notice my mom or someone else in my room, and I would talk to them for a bit, thinking nothing of it but I would always end up turning around and turning back to see they were gone, without hearing my door open and close. What was probably the funniest part of the trip was when one of my dealers came into my room and sold me weed. Then, I remember putting it down, looking away, then looking back to see it gone. I then proceeded to search my room for what was probably 30 minutes, but felt like hours. It took forever to realize that there was no weed, and that I didn't even have money in the first place. When I would get up to go to the bathroom, I would reach for my door handle and my hand would go straight through it. It took me at least 5-10 to 10 minutes to figure out how to open it. After my fourth time going to the bathroom, my mom came up to me and asked me who I was talking to. Not realizing I had been talking to myself, I just said, I don't know. That's when I knew I was fucked. She woke up my dad and they came into my room to talk to me. Every time I get caught on a hard substance, my parents sit down and tell me why I shouldn't do it, how they don't want it in the house, and all that stuff. Of course, I would forget what I was saying in the middle of saying it over and over again, and would try to remember it and continue what I was saying. Except after, I would pause to remember what I was trying to say, then I would just start speaking about something else. I don't remember anything else from the trip myself. 
All I remember is my mom saying, We spent over an hour trying to talk to you, having all sorts of nonsensical conversations. You even tried smoking your blanket. I don't know what she meant by that, but I do know, while it wasn't the most fucked up I had ever been, it was the most fucked up my parents had seen me at that point. I hope this report was at least somewhat amusing. Again, I apologize for the foggy details. Lastly, I'd like to say I don't condone the recreational use of diphenhydramine. This is not a drug that should be taken lightly. It's very intense and very dangerous. First ever DPH trip, 700 milligrams. Today, I'd like to share my first ever DPH report. My summer 2019 had been crazy with drinking and smoking pot, the usual. I ventured into DXM with triple C's, but deemed that uneventful and it didn't bring much excitement. Later that would change with a peer trip. But this is my first DPH trip. It was midweek. It was a week since I quit triple C's and I was craving a good trip. Something that would make me question reality, but psychedelics were out of the question. They were too expensive and came with a hassle of going to the drug man house. I didn't want to go through that today. I'm smoking with my bro and I get a text from one of my good homies saying I should come over and hang out, smoke some bud, and maybe get a bottle. I said, okay, sounds great, I'll spend the night. A couple hours passed and I head over to this dude's house. On the way there, I smoke two bowls out of the pipe. Then, I get dropped off. I'm baked as fuck and head to the back of the house where dude stays in the lower part. I walked in and dude was chilling with his girl and his two other friends. I proceed to greet everyone and smoke a bong rip. I'm talking to dude about my DXM trips with triple C's, since dude also enjoys DXM trips. This is where I learn about pure DXM. He tells me he trips on Robocough, which I now know is amazing. I tell dude I'm craving a trip, and he brings out this bottle of 700 pills of off-brand allergy medication. I laugh at him and say, God damn, that's so many pills. He explains the effect of it, telling me, you will see shadow people, hallucinations, visuals, and I get completely interested and ask, how much do it take? He says to join the 700 club, 700 milligrams of DPH. I ask how many pills are that. He pours out like 32, and I get kind of hesitant, but go through with it anyway. I down all 32 easily and sit back down at this point. I get super excited, waiting for all the effects to hit. My friend rolls a blunt, and we're chilling. About 30 minutes later of talking, we decided to go outside and smoke. I didn't feel any changes yet, but I had a weird feeling in my stomach, and my brain kept giving me these recurring thoughts. I'm not okay. Someone's coming. You're gonna get busted. You're not safe. But I kept pushing them to the back of my head, not thinking anything of it. We spark out the blunt, and we're all talking. I'm not saying anything. My mouth is closed. I didn't feel the need to talk or put my input in when clearly they would speak to me. My friend's dad comes down, hits the blunt, and passes it to me. I smoke the blunt, take around six hits, and passed it. When his dad came down, he let out the two big dogs. And even when I'm sober, I've always been iffy around dogs, so I kept my distance. About 30 more minutes passed, and the blunt is done. We're all outside sitting down, and I still haven't said anything. But I watch as the dog slowly approaches me, with its head down almost as if he was searching for something on the ground and walks up directly to my chair, never looking up at me. It puts one paw on my chair and the next one on my lap. I'm frozen completely, unable to move like I was strapped on the chair. The dog finally raises its head and stares me in the eyes with this big beaming glare, almost as if I was going to get sucked into its brain. Slowly, the dog's arms raise up and it stands on two feet. The dog fucking T-posed on me. I'm screaming internally. The dog smiles and two big sharp teeth glare at me. I could see my reflection almost. I close my eyes and I push the dog away. When I open them, I take a gasp and finally say words. I ask my friend, did y'all see that? That dog came up to me and T-posed on me. My friend responds with, nah man, the dog has been on the other side of the yard laying down the whole time. They all look at me and laugh saying, this dude is fucked up. I laugh back on this because I really was. I tell them I don't feel comfortable out here and ask if we can go back inside 
since the blunt was out. At this point I sit down and notice inside looks different than outside. The room seemed small. It was cramped and at least three shades darker at this point. I sit there in silence for about 10 minutes and stare on the ground. While staring, I thought I was on a stage and the stage lights were flashing on me. Like I was a puppet waiting to be played and for the show to start. I raise up my head and look over to my left. This treasure chest that was in the room kept sliding on the ground back and forth, almost like I was glitching. I stare at the wall and each corner was twitching, twitching like this was a screen and there was an error. About one hour passed to me just staring at the walls and watching everything glitch around. I finally open my mouth and it's super hard to talk, like mega hard. I try to say words and they wouldn't come out. I have a mind trip and thought maybe because I haven't been talking, I forgot how the drugs made me. My friend notices that I open my mouth, but no words are coming out. He sees my struggling, and then my friend says, Yeah bro, it's super hard to talk for me too when I'm on that shit. That triggers something in my head, and I'm able to speak words. Literally, the first words I say are, Impending sense of doom. And dude says, Yeah, you will feel like that. I say I need to lay down. And this is where everything took a turn for the bad. I lay down and my legs wouldn't stop twitching and my body wouldn't stop spazzing out. I felt like there was waves hitting my body and one wave made me glitch out. I also remember having the most dry mouth ever and was drinking so much water. Eventually, I get up from laying down. It was extremely hard to move, might I say. But I sit back down and close my eyes. I close them for about 30 to 40 minutes straight. That's what my friend told me. I had this image in my head that I thought I was in my brother's work truck and I was helping him on a run to work. I open my mouth and say to my friends while my eyes were closed, Hey bro, when you're getting out of work, you think I can help you tonight? My friends later tell me this, but I thought it actually happened, but I guess it didn't. More time passed. I'd say about another hour and I'm starting to be able to talk, move more easily, and the world wasn't glitching anymore. My friends say, I think it's time to go to sleep. It was like 2 a.m. Everyone goes into a room, and I pass out on the couch. I wake up the next morning, feeling super foggy, as if I had been drinking all night. I get up before everyone else, sit outside, and smoke a cigarette. After that, I talk over with my friends about what happened. And after this, I got hooked on DPH for about five more trips, all bumping up the doses, but no other time was like this. It was like my body wasn't processing the chemical because it just kept getting weaker and weaker. And since this trip, I haven't been able to look a dog in the eye without getting extremely uncomfortable and almost scared. When I look back, I kind of regret doing that much DPH. Thank you. DPH at a friend's house I have dabbled in the realms of DPH a few times before, but nothing came close to this trip. All my other times, I just got tired and felt attached to the bed. Point and simple. In an attempt to meet Hatman, me and a friend, whose name will stay disclosed, went to the local Dollar Tree to pick up allergy pills with the intent of tripping on them, as we have done so before. After the purchase, we walk back to his house and wait until his mom falls asleep. Fast forward to around 10 to 10.30 p.m., we ration out the pills and begin to partake. After the first 10 pills, I knew there wasn't any coming back. 23 pills in total later, we begin to do as normal and play Xbox. About 30 to 45 minutes later, he started to feel the effects and have slight visuals, but I lacked all the telltale signs of tripping. I heard voices of people from what seemed to be the 1800s and would shush my friend so I continued to hear their conversation. Little did I know, nobody was there. Shortly after that, I was hit with a wave of sheer visuals, seeing spiders everywhere. Me and my friend sat watching the spiders and laughing at each other when we saw the spiders running around everywhere. I have a terrible fear of spiders, but on the DPH, I felt no fear at all. Rather, I felt curious and euphoric. The big spiders were translucent, but still noticeable while the small spiders on the wall were dark and abundant. I take a peek down the hallway and I'm astonished by what I see. I see a gremlin crawling around the midst of the dark hallway in front of me. 
I continued to stare for what seemed to be a few seconds, but it turned out to be 30 minutes, as I was told. I take another peek out of curiosity and see Hatman, but a very angry and demonic Hatman, indeed. I see a woman and another dark figure alongside them, all seem demonic. I didn't realize at first, but those were the people I heard talking from the 1800s. Top hat, suit and tie, with a rustic looking shave that fit the description of people from the 19th century. I stare at them for what seemed to be, again, a few seconds, but turned out to be hours. They were screaming at me and crawling up and down the ceilings. By this time, I was very antisocial and I couldn't keep a sentence going. I would just stop in the middle of speaking. My friend was quite silent as well, but we still managed to explain the effects we saw to each other. After a few hours of that, probably around 4 a.m., we decided to head to bed. I was suddenly awoken. I looked down to see cockroaches crawling on me. I felt very hot and sweaty, so I got up and grabbed a water bottle. Walking was a very, very hard task at this time. I then decided to go to the bathroom to rinse my face and all that. I found myself going to the bathroom for extended periods of time while on DPH and continue to keep going every 10 to 15 minutes. I'm clueless on why. As I enter the bathroom, I was lacking depth perception, so I couldn't find the light switch, but I didn't care. I then got an idea, a strange one. I was so hot that I poured a water bottle on my head while lying in the bathtub, clueless on how I got there. I felt possessed by Hatman and his friends because they all seemed demonic. I felt like a zombie. About an hour later, his mom awakens from hearing me stumble around in the bathroom. She opened the door and sees me covered in water without the lights on and then, very worried, asked me what happened. I replied with just going to the bathroom. After a scary five minute convo, she lets me go back to bed but still worried of me. She had a good clue that I was tripping but didn't have a rock solid claim. As I awake in the morning around 10 a.m., I again see cockroaches all over me, but I knew that it was all a mind game, so I didn't mind. His mom was up by the time I was, so she called me into the living room to sit down and talk to me about what happened, but again, I said I was fine. That same day, I headed off to work at around 1 p.m., feeling like a straight zombie. Talking to Scarecrows Disclaimer I do not condone this in any shape or form. I was just very bored and intrigued by all of the stories I was hearing about this stuff. I remember this trip very vividly as it was the day I was moving into my new house with my dad. We had been moving stuff in all day and he asked me if I wanted to come with him to the dollar store and pick up some things. I was going to say no at first but just said fuck it because I had nothing better to do considering we weren't going to have internet for a while. The store was just out the road, so it wasn't going to be a long drive or anything. When we got there, we were walking across the aisles when I noticed a stack of diphenhydramine sleeping pills sitting out. I remembered that you can trip on this stuff, so I grabbed a bottle, not really paying attention to the packaging or anything, because I knew I just wanted to get fucked up. When we got back to the house, I went to my room and started to dose out the pills. There were 100 pills with 25 milligrams of diphenhydramine in each pill. I pulled out the calculator on my phone and dosed out 500 milligrams. I took them all in about 5 minutes. I remember having to keep getting up to get more water bottles because I was only taking two at a time, fearing I would throw up or something. I chased down all the pills and started to rearrange my room. When I finished setting up everything in my room, I went out to the kitchen to help my dad set some stuff up. I remember his voice started to seem like it was louder than normal, almost as if he was yelling at me even though he was talking in a regular tone of voice. It started to freak me out a little, so I went back in my room and just lay down for a bit. After laying down for about 5 minutes or so, I realized I had to pee, so I got up out of bed. I remember feeling heavy, like I weighed a ton. At that moment I realized it was starting to kick in. I don't remember if I ever peed or not but I do remember going into the kitchen. And when I would say something to my dad, I would forget what I was saying in the middle of the sentence. I kept saying, do you remember one? Then I would stumble over my words and forget what I was saying. My dad kept asking if I was okay. And I kept saying, 
I'm fine. I just drank a lot of coffee this morning. Trying to come up with an excuse on why I was acting the way I was. I remember coming to my senses and going outside to get away from my dad. I was sitting on my porch looking at Instagram. I don't know why I was doing this considering I didn't have internet or data. But anyways, I see two girls sitting on stacks of hay and they looked hot. So I went over to them to strike up a conversation. But they wouldn't respond to anything I was telling or asking them. They would just sit there blank faced. I still continued talking to them after that. I remember walking out the street, and when I reached into my pocket, I couldn't find my phone. I couldn't remember what I did with it, or where I could have put it. After this, I don't remember anything. I was just there one moment, and the next moment, I was waking up in my bed. I got up and looked all over for my phone, and I couldn't find it. I talked to my dad, and he said he found me in someone's yard, just standing there. He said I was running a fever, and that nothing I was saying was making any sense. I went outside to look for my phone when I recognized the haystacks in my neighbor's yard, only to realize that the girls I was talking to were just scarecrows, not even close to resembling a person. TIFU by overdosing on 1.8 grams of diphenhydramine. This happened three days ago. I'm aware that there are many other reports about the same mistake. You may call me an idiot for not knowing better, and you would be absolutely right. First, some backstory. It was a combination of boredom, dissatisfaction with life, and an ever so growing curiosity towards the unknown. I wanted to break through from this reality, forget everything, and be immersed in a completely strange world. The strange aspect of diphenhydramine is its nonlinear nature of effects. The psychedelic properties can be felt even at low doses, but decrease with increasing dosage as the negative effects, particularly the dry throat and the sense of impending doom, overtake them. However, at a high enough dose, typically referred to as the breakthrough dose, or the 700 club, the negative effects essentially dissipate and one is left in a state of delirium where it becomes impossible to discern reality and imagination. As I began to dive deeper and deeper into these high doses, I deluded myself that I must continue to increase my dose to keep experiencing these states of psychosis without letting my body fully rest and reset my tolerance. And so, my intoxicated mind decided that ingesting 1800 milligrams or 72 pills would be a good idea the very next day after tripping on 1200 milligrams. I put on some music and waited for the effects to kick in. It only took two hours until I started to regret everything. The sense of impending doom was unlike anything I've ever experienced before. My throat felt like it was on fire, and sipping water relieved it for only a few seconds. My chest started tightening, as well as my back, left arm, and my neck. My entire body was constantly shaking, and I was profusely sweating through my hands and feet. The only thing I could think of was pain, pain, pain. I felt very nauseous, yet could not bring myself to throw up for the fear of waking my roommates and making them see how fucked up I was. I spent the next six hours in agonizing pain, trying my best to deep breathe and taking a walk of shame to the bathroom every 10 minutes. Urinary retention made it nearly impossible to urinate, but was relieved when sitting on the toilet made it work. The stimulating effect of diphenhydramine at such a staggering dose, combined with an already staggering tolerance, made it impossible to drift into delirium as I was constantly brought back to the reality of my suffering. I've never overdosed on caffeine, but I would imagine it would be similar to this experience. I managed to fall asleep around 3 a.m. and proceeded to have vivid dreams all night, some of which I still remember clearly. In my dreams, I was shown countless flashbacks of my childhood, including past traumas, which I subconsciously embedded in the deepest parts of my memory. I woke up the next morning with a horrible headache, fatigue, and a numbing soreness around my chest, back, and left arm. Apparently, I've slept on my left side all night, which was a bad idea since it put unnecessary strain on my heart and surrounding blood vessels. 
limiting the blood flow to the area. I lost the sensation to touch in that area, and still hurts when I rub it. Although I felt absolutely terrible physically, emotionally, I felt calm and happy that I'm still alive and that I've made through it. This was also when I noticed the external hallucinations for the first time, seeing shadow figures walking all around my vision. I spent the day resting, eating pasta, and doing simple tasks like cleaning my room. It's three days later, and I finally got my full appetite back. I'm still recovering physically, but I'm really glad that I made it through intact mentally and emotionally. I've used this experience to work on myself, set my goals straight, and promise myself to try my hardest staying sober, at least during this semester. Thanks for reading, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Too long, didn't read? Tripped on 1800 milligrams of DPH. Ended up not tripping at all, almost died. Don't underestimate your drugs. The following is an edit of a trip report that I originally posted to Reddit on r slash dph on 9 19 This was the first out of two times I've done DPH yet. This happened the day after the 4th of July this year. A few weeks before, my friend Robot and I got drunk and he suggested tripping on Benadryl. But I decided not to buy any that night and looked it up when I went home and sobered up. I decided it was stupid and dysphoric, so I didn't want to do it. But on this night, I went out and drank with him. We had a pint of steel reserve, 8.1% malt liquor each, and he also stole a bottle of Chardonnay that he drank about half of while I had a couple sips. We picked up another friend, Purple, and then Robot went and stole a six pack of Jack Daniel screwdrivers, like 15% malt in normal sized glass bottles, presumably around 10 to 12 fluid ounces, and also three 100 pill bottles of Benadryl. 25 milligrams each. Drunk, I had completely forgotten any information about tripping on DPH and was too lazy to look up anything, including dosing. So all three of us had our two drinks and donned the bottles as if it was fucking DXM or some shit. Our drunk logic being that he tripped on 900 milligrams last time and it was good, so a little less pet more would be better, and 2,500 wasn't that much more than 900, somehow. Stupid drunk logic. So we finished our drinks at the park, lit off some fireworks, blew up the toilets, and pulled off. As we were driving around, the DPH started to come on. Purple ended up passing out in the back seat. Robot was asking me to take him to Kroger to steal more alcohol, but I wasn't feeling well. So I decided to pull off to one of our hangout spots to try and feel the high out as I began tripping, as with other drugs. But this time, it just kept getting worse, and eventually at one point, I felt the urge to take a piss, just randomly and really strongly. I opened the door to step out, but I didn't make it. I ended up pissing my pants in the driver's seat of my own car. At this point, I realized, oh shit, it's one of these kinds of drugs. I gotta get the fuck home. If I at least get back to my house, my parents can help the other two home. On the way back down the highway, there was someone sitting in the middle of the turning lane and our mirrors collided. Mine broke off and was holding on for dear life by the wires. Another car came up behind us. Robot and I highly assumed it was the people we just hit, but I was in no position to step out and give them information. We ended up 500 feet away from them, falling into the road incoherent. All that was on my mind was to get home before I'm too far gone. I start speeding down back to my neighborhood and I end up missing the turn, so I turn onto another road and attempt to turn around, but I end up getting lost again and at one point hit a curb and jump up into the air. At one point, my friend and I hear my dog talking from the back seat, and we both turned around and ask him, Mammoth, did you just say something? And he looks us dead in the eyes and in a very deep, distinguished, white American voice says, Yes, and nods. Robot and I look at each other, and just scream, what the fuck? Eventually, we end up in a cul-de-sac, and I'm unable to turn my car around, at which point, my other friend, who I decided to call Purple for some reason, awakens in the back seat, and we exit the vehicle. We start wandering around the people's houses, 
and doing some random shit that I don't remember. It's nighttime, but I can see less than usual and everything felt smaller in scale, like my surroundings felt claustrophobic, even outside. Everyone has to go off and take a piss a lot, but I still end up pissing my pants again, this time standing in the middle of the road near my fucking truck. All three of us end up being acquainted with the head of Stonewalk and fall into the ground seven billion times with every step. I end up leaving my jacket in the car and my phone in someone else's yard, and I end up separated from my friends. But before this, I kept seeing my parents' cars driving around, and I thought I tried to get in with them, but they weren't because my parents didn't know what was going on until the morning. So my dog ends up leading me away from my friends and tries to get us home. At this point, I have him on the leash. After this, all three of us were blacked the fuck out. I hear later that my friend Robot, the one who suggested we trip to begin with, knocks on someone's door and wakes them up and asks them to call 911 because he felt like he was dying. Eventually, I come to when the sun rises and I've made it back to the main road and I'm walking down the middle of the turning lane. I remember having my jacket on, but I have actually no idea if I had it or not. But I remember smoking on the way home, so I'm not sure. I remember listening to music, but as previously stated, I had lost my phone on someone's yard, so that was a complete figment of my imagination. Around 6 in the morning, my dog and I make it back around to my part of the neighborhood, but I'm still a few streets down. I remember thinking I was at a party with my friends or something at some of the houses. One of them I thought was my manager's house, but she doesn't live near me. At one point, I ended up actually getting triple vision, like the red, green, and blue everywhere, like on acid, and I was so happy, but it didn't last long. I kept going through people's backyards and shit, and kept walking down the road, trying to find my house. Eventually, I find a house that I believe is mine, but I remember noticing that something was different and being weirded out that something changed. But I went inside anyways and took my dog off the leash and put it down. At some point, I thought I got locked out of my own house, so I started walking around again, hopefully never having entered a house at all and just throwing my dog's leash on a random place on the ground. So I begin walking again. A small black car drives by, and I remember freaking out, thinking it was my ex. I hear her dad yell out from the passenger seat, You motherfucker! You motherfucker! I fucking hate you! I fucking hate you! What the fuck did you do to my daughter? What the fuck did you do to my daughter? I stumbled back with my hands in the air and yelled back, Yo, chill man, I didn't do fucking shit to her. I didn't do fucking shit. And then they drove away. But I spent the rest of my walk home scared out of my mind, avoiding every black car, even freaking out over one that always sits at this one house. Eventually, I make it back on my own street, even though my dog's not on a leash. I go up to a random house and try and open the door. It doesn't open, so I knock. No one opens the door, so I turn and try the next house. I take one step down the stairs to their porch, and suddenly I'm on the ground on my face. I lift my right arm, and it's covered in pebbles and road ash. I, oh shit, and stand up and start walking down further to my actual house. My car's home, but I think nothing of it. After locating my home, my dog and I go around the back and go up to the garage where I discover my parents who ask me what's going on. They tell me my friends were picked up by an ambulance and the police called them about my car. My friend Robot was found in the grass and my friend Purple was found on the road. Robot, despite requesting the ambulance, proceeds to have an altercation with the medical staff and police. That is how he explained it. They were both taken to the ICU and diagnosed with rhabdomyolysis, a condition which after the diphenhydramine is metabolized in the liver, it turns into this chemical that breaks down your muscles. The small dude who wore a hat with a purple dragon on it had two drinks and was in there until the next Friday. Robot, who had more to drink, was in there until next Sunday, a whole 10 days. But my parents came up to me like, did you and your friends do fucking PCP? They said they were on PCP when the ambulance got them. I said, hell no, we downed bottles of Benadryl. I remember my mom telling my dad I was completely out of it, but they believed me. 
they let me go to my room, wherein I tried to sleep. Here's where shit got really fucking psychotic. They had me take a shower, and I thought I watched YouTube while taking a shit, but left my phone in the bathroom. I told them to call my phone because I couldn't find it. I heard it ring. My mom looked and said it wasn't there. But after they left me, I kept finding it in my covers. Whenever I would try and use it, as soon as I got to an app, I began to see through it to my hand and it would fall out. I would find it again and try and plug it in, but it would fall to the floor. Whenever I checked the floor, all that I could pick up was my charger. This repeated a multitude of times. I kept having to jump out of my bed and slap my body because I thought ants were crawling on me. I kept seeing spiders crawl out of dents in my wall. I checked later. These were not holes. At one point, one crawled out of an actual hole in my ceiling and started making a web. It scared me, but I didn't do anything about it. At various points, I thought my friends were with me in my room. I saw my friend Purple sitting in my office chair, but I knew he was at the hospital, and when I got up to check, the chair was empty. I heard my fan talk with the voice of a friend I first smoked weed with. I just kept hearing voices of friends saying random shit in there for a while, and it felt like I was fucking insane. I think one of my personalities even started talking, like it was more separate and probably went off about dark shit. God damn it, Echo. My aunt, who stays over at my house frequently to help my parents clean, actually came in to check on me a few times and gave me a honey bun to eat. I took one bite, but when I looked at it again, it was covered in ants. So next time she came in, she threw it away for me. Eventually, I got a couple hours of sleep, and I woke up at 10. I came to the conclusion that, well, I'm probably not going to be on time for work if I fall asleep again, since it was in five hours. So I started to put my uniform on, but my parents saw me walk out with it, and they said, no, we're calling the store phone and getting you called out. So I went back to bed and woke up in the afternoon. I stopped tripping, but I was still faded as fuck. I ended up having a hangover for a full-on week, longer than my first time doing DXM and worse than acid. That evening, my dad gave my phone back, and my arm swelled up and I thought it was broken. The next day, my mom took me to the hospital and I got an x-ray and a head scan to see if I broke my arm from the fall or got a concussion or any contusions from all the falling head first onto concrete. I ended up not having anything serious, just having a nasty wound that I still have a scar for. The head, my doctor said, literally quote, just massive levels of dipshit in front of my mother. And after telling them about what my friends had, they ran a test on me and said my liver was fucked up, but that might be just alcoholism, so check back in a week. Never did. Robot got into some drama once he got home afterwards. He got sent off to fight in World War III, then dropped off the edge of the earth for an entire year. Purple's mom still has only let me hang out with him once after this. This paragraph is new and exclusive to the email, and not in my original Reddit post a couple months ago. That night had a very stressed panic feeling to it. The morning after the blackout had more of an adventurous feel to it before I got home but I just kept getting scared by everything. When I did get home, of course, how fuck the night had ended up dawned on me, and of course the delirium psychosis scared me. DPH doesn't need to be explored in doses above 1500, period, at all. There's your aerial. Anything else is blackout and possible damage. My friend Purple still has uneven muscles on his arm four months later. Always practice drugs safely. Make sure you know what you're taking, the effects, possible harmful side effects, and dosage. Make sure they aren't cut with anything harmful or don't have added harmful ingredients if it's store-bought. This trip fucked me up. I get jittery on drop if I'm even taking two Benadryl for allergies. Just tasting those pills. If I take a double dose to sleep, mentally, I flip out and I freeze. I see nothing, of course but I end up not being able to move to even turn off my lamp or plug my phone in the charger. Too long, didn't read, from original posting. Got drunk on July 5th. Friends stole three Benadryl bottles. We took the whole thing each. Couldn't drive home. 
pissed my pants twice. They OD'd and got picked up by the ambulance. I got saved from ODing because I'm fat and my dog took me home. Got lost in my own neighborhood on the way there and thought my ex's dad was going to kill me for touching his daughter. Then, me and my friends all went psycho and saw each other even though we were in different rooms. All sustained injuries. One friend is going to the army now over this. One friend still can't hang out with me. Ending note from Arrow. Be careful with your drugs, y'all. DPH is funky shit. DXM and LSD are a lot better trips. Don't underestimate your drugs. Try and do drugs you've never done before. Sober too.